is also connected to the bigger picture and the bigger picture of Guyana tourism problem. And I'd like to tell the story. When Shemaine was doing her masters with Mona, her tourism masters with Mona in Jamaica, and she did an internship at the Jamaica Pegasus. And she came back to Guyana all excited to tell us about this wedding expo that they had in Jamaica. And that maybe it's something we should embrace here at Juke Lodge. We immediately adopted the idea and started. And I think she herself was shocked. When you see the wedding expo in Jamaica, they were like, they're now like maybe 20 years old. Um, and it's a nice wedding expo. But the wedding expo in Guyana was amazing. She herself was shocked because the wedding expo in Guyana was an explosion of colors, was an explosion of culture, was an explosion of religion. And while the wedding expo in Jamaica was a Christian wedding expo, all you saw was white dresses and in black suits and so on. Here you see an array of colors, and this morning you'll see a little bit of that. So we were very excited when we first experimented with the wedding expo six years ago. And first of all, we saw the response that young businesses got. Karen takes, I all remember the story. We saw this little cardboard sign outside of a yard in, in Hatton Street, and my staff went in that she made cakes. Karen cakes, little cardboard sign. And they went in and said, Karen, come. And she said, well, I don't have money, so this is still come. We gave you a little desk and you put your stuff up and she came. And the first year, the second year, Karen was saying, I'm too busy. I don't think I could make it, but she did come. And she was always here every year. But the wedding expo grew her business. In fact, there was an explosion in her business. The wedding expo is cross-cutting. In fact, in Jamaica, which is one of the surprising things that happened here in Guyana, in Jamaica, you see courts, for example, courts is a major participant in wedding expo in Jamaica because people getting married, got to furnish their house and so on. The banks that will have to do mortgages, the insurance companies, the beverage companies. But somehow here in Guyana, we have to continuously persist and persevere every year to convince the big companies that you don't always do things that benefit you, but you do things that benefit the country. And I'm working in it, and I intend to keep doing it every year. And eventually, hopefully, they will get on board. They will get on board to understand that we need to work hard, work together to develop the Ghana tourism product, and to help small businesses give, to be given the opportunity for exporting. Ghana tourism is on the move. And it started a long time ago. But I would say to you, we are very fortunate at this time to have a vibrant, young minister acting tourism. And he should be. We actually say to the president, we want him to ourselves. We don't want to share him with housing. We want him to be the minister of tourism. It's a, it's a hard fight. But he's doing a wonderful job. Um, and I think the president of fact will testify to that because we are seeing the changes that are happening in the tourism sector. The idea behind this as well is that we want to make Guyana a wedding destination. When you go to Canada and Miami and, and live in Toronto and New York, you find a lot of young people getting married and they're going to the Dominican Republic and Barbados and St. Lucia. And the question is why are they coming to Guyana? Why are they coming to Guyana to get married at the Kaicho Falls and the Baganara Resort, at the Arrow Point, at Toro Cabra? First of all, because our laws were written a hundred million years ago. And what we did is that we demanded that people get married again. I gotta be here living for two weeks or three weeks or some foolish or something. And we started to say to our government, please look at these laws. Please look at these laws and please let's change these laws to make wet to make weddings in Guyana hassle free. To make it happen where our young Guyanese who are overseas and want to come back home to get married to do that. We've had weddings here with two or three hundred people who came in, Hindu weddings and Christian weddings, who came in and used our hotels and our planes and our restaurants, all of this. 
We want to make that happen a hundred times a year. But we have to change the law. And this minister, the first time I spoke to, to, to him about it, he jumped on board and he's working it every day. And he tell us more about it. So wedding making guy a wedding destination will benefit every one of us, all the exhibitors. It will benefit every restaurant, every resort. People will come to those resorts. So what I'm finding as well, unfortunately, and I was speaking to the president of TAC today, I'm finding that the tourism entities, the resorts are not coming on board. And they are going to be the ones that will benefit as well. People will go out to the exotic resorts to get married. But they're not coming to support the wedding expo, but they will benefit from the wedding expo. And we love to do this. We love to sit them by the wayside and then benefit from the other things that are happening. And so we need to urge everyone to come on board and make this um, a success and so we all could work on it. You know, what is making this more possible now, if you look at it in the last year, we certainly we've lost Delta, which is unfortunate. I know they were talking to the minister about coming back. But we have an opening up of a new dispensation. We have a lot of other airlines coming to Ghana. Copa Airlines are going to come to Ghana, open up Ghana to the entire region in which we live now, and to Europe. We have Insular that is also going to be coming. We have Convi Asset that is coming. And these new airlines will open up Ghana to all kinds of tourism possibilities. And so for me, while we have challenges we are facing every day, I say that the future of the tourism is quite exciting. And our tourism is like no other tourism anywhere in the world for one particular reason. Kaitro Falls. There is nothing else like Kaitro Falls in the region, nor the world. And that is the pivotal attraction here in Ghana that we must capitalize on. So the Wedding Expo will continue, it will be used for that, and this year the Wedding Expo is going to be excited. And one last thing I want to say to you, she may just speak to you about the issue of the race to the altar. Last year, for the first time we did it, where we advertised and encourage young people who are in love when they, there's some particular criteria, they have to be in love, they don't have that say to be young and good looking like my friend Lee over here. But they have to be they have to give us the impression that they're in love and we want to see how they behave and so on. So we put them through a whole set of paces. And um, we took them to Arrow Point and we had them riding and we put them in conditions where we see the quarrel with each other and, and finally we picked one couple. And Lee, I wanted to hear your beautiful bride and stand up if she could straight. <laughs> And they were chosen last year from a group of 15, thank you very much, of 15 couples, and they became the winners of the race to the altar. And they had a dream wedding here in Duplass. They drove up here in a beautiful white limousine, and they walked through this compound, and they had a beautiful wedding with the dresses donated by um, our wedding expo uh, exhibitors. They had the rings donated by King Jewel. They had the shoes and the suits. I mean, it was amazing, and we hosted the wedding here for them. And I think they had, uh, some, this will live with them for the rest of their lives. And so the idea is every year, this is what we want to do. So this year, as well, we've done it. I think they have eight to ten couples that, uh, that is uh, applying. And the, um, the games will begin very shortly, where we will take them through the paces. And um, the, the country will also have an opportunity to help vote for them on Facebook. Um, on the different on the different media, and then we will make the final announcement. And she may have to tell us a little bit more about that when she comes. But that so this year, wedding expo is going to be a lot more um, exciting. We are hoping to bring the public more involved with the with the race to the altar and to get more buy-in from the public. And I ask all of you, and including the minister and Kit, if you could please get your members of TAC on board. This is everything to do with tourism, and the minister all the support you could give to wedding expo. We appreciate it very much. Thank you very much. Also giving us the honeymoon package this year, so we're very excited. This is a lot of excitement for the couples. I mean, all of the activities of going to our point, doing the aerial tours, and Oshani and me is going to tell you a lot about that. We closed all the applications. We had nine applicants who applied. They're here today, um, so they will also. The public will get to view these couples to be able to go on. To, you'll see them on the TV shows. You'll be able to vote for them through text messages. 
through the Facebook and so on. So you, the public, will be able to let us know who you want to win this race to the altar. And it's about showing compatibility about all the things about marriage. So that you can see that and see what is it that we are trying to promote, just, not just wedding tourism and a wedding destination, but to promote family and marriages and so on as well. So I'm going to introduce you to Lee and Oshani, who's going to tell you a little bit about their experience last year. Thank you. 